From my home to yours, God's richest blessings, my friends. If you need prayer, would you kindly post your prayer request in the comment section? My team and I will gladly lift up a prayer on your behalf. Today we're going to talk about how each of us has a role to play in God's kingdom. Now, I don't know if you knew this or not, but two of my teenage years were spent carrying a tuba in my high school marching band. My mom wanted me to learn to read music. The choir was at capacity, but the band was a tuba tutor short. So I signed up. Not necessarily what you'd call a call from God, but it wasn't a wasted experience either. I learned a few lessons. What I saw of years ago in the band, I see today in the church. And that is, we all need each other, but we don't all play the same instrument. Some believers are lofty, others are solid. Some keep the pace while others lead the band. Not all of us make the same sound. As some are soft, others are loud. And not all of us have the same ability. Some perform dazzling and rousing solos. Others, well, we need to be in the background, <laughs> playing back up. But each of us has a place, which brings me to Mary and Martha and Lazarus in John chapter 12. They were like family to Jesus. After the Lord raised Lazarus from the dead, they decided to give a dinner for Jesus. They decided to honor him by having a party on his behalf. John 12 describes how all three worked together with one purpose, but each one filled that purpose in his or her own unique manner. Martha. Martha served. She always kept everyone in step. Mary. Mary worshipped. She anointed her Lord with an extravagant gift, and its aroma filled the air. And Lazarus? Well, Lazarus had a story to tell, and he was ready to tell it. Three people, each one with a different skill, a different ability, but each one of equal value. Think about it. Could their family have done without any one of the three? You know, every church needs a Martha. Change that. Every church needs a hundred Marthas. Sleeves rolled up and ready. They keep the pace for the church. Because of Marthas, the church budget gets balanced. The church babies get bounced. And the church building gets built. You don't appreciate Marthas until a Martha is missing. And then all the Marys and the Lazaruses are scrambling around looking for the keys, looking for the thermostats, looking for the projectors. Marthas are the energizer bunnies of the church. They keep going and going and going. They seem to store strength like a camel stores water. And since they don't seek the spotlight, they don't live off the applause. Now, that's not to say they don't need it. They just aren't addicted to it. Marthas have a mission. In fact, if Marthas have a weakness, it's their tendency to elevate the mission over the master. Maybe you remember when Martha did that, a younger Martha, a younger version of Martha invites Jesus to come to dinner. Jesus accepts and he brings his disciples. In the scene Luke describes has Mary seated and Martha fuming. Martha is angry because Mary is horror of horrors, sitting at the feet of Jesus. I mean, who has time to sit and listen when there is bread, bread to be baked and tables to be set and souls to be saved? So Martha complained, Lord, you don't care. You don't care that my sister has left me alone to do all the work. Tell her to help me. That's 1040 of, chapter Luke, of, of the book of Luke. Martha, Jesus said, you're worried and upset about many things. Only one thing is important, and Mary has chosen the better thing, and it will never be taken away from her. That's verses 41 and 42 of Luke chapter 10. Apparently, Martha got the point because here we find her serving again. Here a dinner was being given in the honor of Christ. And in John chapter 12, Martha served without complaining. 
And Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him, the scripture says. And then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. That's John 12, 2 and 3. Is Mary in the kitchen? No. She's playing her flute for Jesus. She's worshiping, for that's what she loves to do. But this time Martha doesn't complain. Martha doesn't object. She has learned that there is a place for praise and worship. And that is what Mary is doing. And what is Mary's part in the dinner? Well, she brings a pint, a very expensive perfume, and she pours it on the feet of Christ. And she wipes his feet with her hair. And what a smell that must have been. The, the fragrance of that, of that perfume filling the house, just like worship can fill the church. And earlier, Martha would have objected. Such an act was too lavish, too extravagant, too generous. But this more mature Martha has learned that just as there is a place in the kingdom of God for sacrificial service, there is also a place for extravagant praise. Marys are gifted with praise. They don't just sing, they worship. They don't simply attend church. They go to offer praise. They don't just talk about Christ. They radiate Christ. Marys seem to have one foot in heaven and another on a cloud. And it's not easy for them to come down to earth. But sometimes they need to. Sometimes they need to be reminded that there are bills to be paid. There are classes to be taught. But don't remind them too harshly. Flutes are fragile. Marys are precious souls with tender hearts. And if they have found a place at the foot of Jesus... Don't ask them to leave. Much better to ask them to pray for you. That's what I do. When I find a Mary, I like to say, hey, how do I get on your prayer list? Every church desperately needs Marys. We need them, don't we? We need them. Because we tend to forget how much God loves worship. Marys don't forget. They don't forget. They, they know that God wants to be known as a father. And they know that a father likes nothing more than to have his children sit at his feet and spend time with him. Marys get this. Now, Marys need to remember that service is worship as well. Marthas need to remember that worship is service. And Lazarus? Well, Lazarus needs to remember that not everyone can play the trumpet. You see, as far as we know, Lazarus did nothing at the dinner. He saved his actions for outside the house. Carefully read John 12, 9 through 11. A large crowd of Jews heard that Jesus was in Bethany. So they went there to see not only Jesus, but Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So the leading priests made plans to kill Lazarus too. Because of Lazarus, many Jews were leaving them and believing in Jesus. Because of Lazarus, many Jews were believing in Jesus. You see, Lazarus had been given a trumpet. He had a testimony to give. And what a testimony he had. God gave Martha a bass drum of service. God gave Mary a flute for praise. And God gave Lazarus a trumpet. And he stood on center stage and played it. Now, God still gives trumpets. God still calls people from the pits. God still gives pinch me, I'm dreaming, too good to be true testimonies. But not everyone has a dramatic story. And who wants a band full of trumpets anyway? So if God has called you to be a Martha, then serve. And remind the rest of us that there is evangelism in feeding the poor and there is worship in nursing the sick. If God has called you to be a Mary, then worship and remind the rest of us that we don't have to be busy to be holy. Urge us with your example to put down our clipboards and, and megaphones and checklists and be quiet in worship. And if God has called you to be a Lazarus, then speak up. And remind the rest of us that we too have a story to tell. We too have neighbors 
who were lost, we too have died and been resurrected. Each of us has our place in God's story. Find yours, won't you?